Hi, my name is Eric Bjorndal and I'm a lead mentor at Blue Startups. Click Trips is, is my main company right now and it's, uh, it's one of the largest uh, travel ad networks um, on the internet. And we started it because we were looking for a way to make money off my old website, TravBuddy. And we found that, you know, just hotel bookings, flight bookings, and ads of that nature were, you know, just very lucrative. And then we discovered that other travel websites were looking for similar ways to monetize. So we started the company, my brother, uh, myself, and another guy who used to work at Kayak. Um, and we really just started it for ourselves and for, for ways to monetize our own travel sites. And then we realized like other people needed the same technology to make money on their travel websites. And it kind of just spread through word of mouth. And I mean, that's, you can kind of see the, the name of the company, Click Trips with a Z. Like when we started the company, we weren't expecting anyone to ever, you know, refer, like it was, it was gonna be like a, a small company that no one would ever really refer to or know about. And it just eventually kept growing and, uh, you know, grew it to, 70 employees, we're on hundreds of sites all over the internet now, uh, including some of the largest, you know, travel and content sites in the world. So um, I would say we, not, we didn't really set out to grow it to a big company, but it just, you know, we found like this really weird niche that other travel sites needed and uh, we're able to grow the company. And I would say the biggest challenge, you know, in growing it was I want to say just like taking it seriously, but since we had started it as a side project, we never took it fully seriously. And then um, when we shifted our attention to it full time and we saw that other competitors were raising like tens of millions of dollars to run a similar idea, um, you know, we realized let's, let's focus on this full time and let's reinvest the profits of the business to try to grow. So I think one of the biggest challenges was just, you know, deciding that we were going to focus on it full time and kind of reinvest more money into it because we never took any outside funding. We thought about it, you know, taking investment, but um, I think, you know, one of the reasons the three of us started the company was just that we didn't want to work for other people. And, you know, if you have investors uh, at the end of the day, you're, you're responsible for your investors. You wanted to build a company that you know, we had control of that we would enjoy working on and that we could kind of build in the, the image of what, you know, we wanted, right? Um, and it wasn't necessarily, you know, like an immediate exit or trying to scale it. You know, like a lot of companies now, they're just, they're just trying to scale it as quickly as they can so that they can sell it or raise more money, right? But um, for us, we were, I wouldn't want, I don't want to call it a lifestyle business because that sort of has neg negative connotations, but for us, the company was a more a means a means to an end right to you know live a, a full and balanced life so um yeah we never we never really thought about taking investors just because we wanted that freedom and flexibility you know that we would have to manage it on our own i reached out to chinoa and she introduced me to blue startups and i started out just as like a uh, a mentor as part of their larger mentor network and I would help with uh, specifically with their travel tech companies and then after a few years of that um, they asked me to to be a lead mentor where you know I was working more one-on-one -on -one with individual companies mainly so they're all they're all most of them are travel companies or uh, advertising companies um, so just in helping with with their business models um, helping with you know, like introductions to companies in the travel space. Uh, just uh, one of the companies, they were, you know, growing their team out from just a handful of employees to, you know, a dozen employees and um, just advice on what we went through when we were growing our company out, whether or not investments made sense to scale the company. So I'd say, I'd say all around, like just business advice, um, you know, technical advice, uh, strategic advice, um, I'd say on the investing side of things, I'm less, less helpful because we didn't raise money, but I can at least give a perspective uh, as someone who's invested in other startups and stuff. I, I can at least give them a perspective of what I'd like to see in uh, companies that I would invest in. Actually, for the last few years, I've been investing full time um, and just in kind of an advisory role at my company. So I, I kind of look at things 
I don't know, I would categorize myself as investor, not conservative, but I mean, I like companies that have, you know, attractive biz business models. And I like companies that at least have a roadmap, plausible roadmap for making money. So there's a lot of companies, like my original company, Trap Buddy, you know, we grew the company to, I think, one and a half million like registered members, right? It was a social networking site for travelers. And it, it sounds like a great number, but it was actually very hard to make money because most of the people coming in the site were there to meet other people on the site. They weren't purchasing anything. They weren't clicking on ads. So I, I've been very skeptical of like what I call vanity numbers, like number of app downloads, number of members, number of, uh, you know, like numbers that don't directly correl necessarily correlate with revenue. Um, so I'm, I'm like very, uh, I guess I'm very rigorous in how I look at how a company can make money and if they have the potential to make money. And I'm very skeptical, skeptical of uh, companies that, uh, you know, are, are just there to, I want to say, just there to scale quickly without a plan to make money after they scale or, you know, only make money after they scale because that's just very counterintuitive to how I, how I started my own business where, you know, basically that if I didn't make money with the business, I wouldn't be able to pay my rent, right? So it's, uh, it's just a kind of a different mentality. The biggest piece of advice that helped me out, um, you know, when my brother and I were starting our companies were, uh, you know, like everyone, when they think about starting a company, they're like, oh, that's so risky. You know, like, I don't want to leave my job. I don't want to, it's just not, it's not the secure career path, right? But the way I've always thought about it is that the worst thing that could happen if you leave your job and you start a company and you fail is that you can always go get your old job back probably, right? And you can always uh, take the experience that you learn from trying to start a company that's like it's not like wasted time even if you do fail right you've learned a lot and you can apply that even if you decide to go back to a traditional career path so i guess my advice would be that the the risk of starting your own company is often far less than you know what people perceive and even if you do fail it's not it's not the end of the world right you, you still you're still progressing in your, uh, I guess, career development, even if it's not through the traditional um, company career path. Uh, so yeah, that, that'd be my biggest piece of advice is no, don't worry about failure. Don't worry about um, not pr pursuing the traditional career path because you're still, you're still progressing, right? And you're still learning a lot. And if you do succeed, then you're, you can be in a better place. Thank you.